Welcome to the Apocalypse. This is episode 24 of our Let's Play of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. And in this zombie apocalypse episode, we've got just a few other things I want to do around the base real quick. And I took a look in between episodes at a few things I wanted to get done. And uh, would get those finished up, just a few items to craft really fast. And then we're going to take a trip. And I'm hoping to go out in the car, actually. So, And we might even take that NPC along with us. Um, so let's get some things done, get right into it. So first thing I'd like to do is we finished leveling up our fabrication and our tailoring last episode to pretty good levels, and there's a few items I think we could use. So first off, we've got our fire going, so we're going to take advantage of that. And first thing, I am going to build a washboard. So if I search for washboard, there it is. All it takes is a 2x4. So I'm going to say yes to that. And we successfully built the washboard. And that, in combination with the soap and some water, is going to give us the ability to clean filthy items. So we've only got a single bar of soap. It's got limited uses, so we'll see just how much we can accomplish. Um, but other than the washboard, I also wanted to build... Some holsters. So if I do a search for holster, we've got a few choices. Back holster, which is mainly for rifles and uh, shotguns and large long weapons primarily. There's also an ankle holster and a standard hip holster. I'm going to build one each of the ankle and the standard holster. So we'll go with the ankle holster first and we'll tell it to use. Let's use the sinew. We don't use that often. And it was successful. Next up, we'll build the other one. Oops, spelled that wrong. Oh, all right. Hmm. We're running out of leather patches, I'm going to assume. So, we got our ankle holster finished. Let's go ahead and wear the ankle holster. Step across the way here, and I'm going to take the Beretta M9. Actually, let's take both of these. And we'll stay here. If I do a shift I or capital I and then highlight both of these, we can do a side by side. And the reason I'm choosing the Beretta M9 over the Glock is that the Beretta has one space of range further and one point of damage more. And that's pretty much the only distinctions that I can see between the two. They're both going to use uh, 9mm jacketed hollow point ammo, so I can pull the ammo out of the Glock. I don't have a spare magazine for the Beretta, so I'll just have to keep the bullets loose and then uh, re-ammo up the uh, Glock's uh, magazine once we run out of shots so ideally you'd want to have spare magazines that you could uh, go ahead and load up and have ready to go to just slam in and keep firing um, so we're going to take the Breda M9 we're just going to unload the Glock so let's go here actually we'll step away and say unload Glock and then we're going to drop the Glock back in our weapons pile and we'll step down here I'm going to drop the spare where are the bullets? I expected to see 9mm ammo right here. Did we? Oh, we unlocked. We unloaded the Glock magazine. So we need to unload again. So we'll unload the magazine. All right. And then we'll drop the magazine into the magazine pile. And that's already done. All right. I'm going to put the 9mm jacket of hollow points in the basket. And then we are going to activate. Move the option over to our ankle holster, and we're going to pick the Beretta. All right, and you can see here we holster your Beretta M9. So if I look at my inventory screen over here, you can see we've got an ankle holster with the Beretta M9. And that, like I said, is not going to count against our volume limit, so it's worn on our body. The ankle, holst ankle holster does cause a little bit of encumbrance, and I can show you that here. So, right there, it's on our left foot, is where the ankle holster is located. And there is a command to tell it to switch if you have a preference for some reason, if you want it on one or the other. But it makes no other effective difference that I'm aware of. But if I go look at it, so right there we've got the ankle holster. This is strapped onto you. And you can see now that the left foot has got 34 versus 30 for its uh, encumbrance. So the rubber boots are where we're getting most of this uh, bad value. Um, let's go take a look at our cart again here. Get items. 
I don't have my boots in here apparently. Nope. I'm going to take off the rubber boots for now and drop them in the cart if we come across. Um, right there. If we come across an acid zombie, I just need to remember to uh, pick those back up and put them back on again. Put the waistcoat in there as well. All right. Oh yeah, I need to find some shoes to wear. What do we got? What do we got? We got our winter boots. Probably a little too warm. I thought I had some other kind of shoes, but it looks like we don't. So it's either the winter boots or the rubber boots for now. Unless we clean a pair up. Our soap I just saw in our inventory only has 10 charges, so what do we got in here that we would really, really want to use? Army helmet would be good as opposed to the riot helmet. Only does the head versus the eyes and f mouth. A little bit of protection. Pretty high encumbrance though. Um, sling pack. What else we got in here? Another leather backpack. Safety glasses. Bit cargo pants. Here's some of our fire gear. Turnout boots, turnout boots. What are the stats on the turnout boots? I don't remember. Way high encumbrance, but massive protection. Alright. There's some combat boots. So 15 encumbrance. It fits, and it's got 2 bash, 3 cut, with a little bit of environmental and acid protection. Alright. Nothing super critical in there. A couple leather backpacks, some cargo pants, and a few of the other items are pretty nice, but nothing that's jumping out at me is got to have it right now type of thing. Um, let's pick up the combat boots, and let me show you how the cleaning works. So uh, let's move over here, actually. So it's raining outside, and previous episode we had set up uh, a tank with a funnel and hopefully it's been collecting rainwater. Let's check it. So if I examine that space, you can see it's going to ask me if I want to take the funnel down. I'm going to say no for the moment. And right here, you can see we have 76 units of water has accumulated in our tank. That's great. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. Let's first do use it to wash. So I'm going to apply... Whoops, get out of this menu. I'm going to apply and the washboard and it's going to ask us what, and we only have one item nearby, the boots. And it says you washed your clothing. Great. So we can see now down tools, food. There it is, right at the bottom. Armor, right there is the boots. So they are now clean. We can use them safely. And it used up two charges of our soap. So I can't remember if soap is always two charges or if it changes depending on the item. But... Uh, We'll try it out. So there's our pair of combat boots. We can put those on now. So we're going to wear the combat boots. Let's check our status here. So we're only 15 and 19 on the feet now. And we've got combat boots on. We don't have socks or anything. Warmth is okay. Ideally, we want layers and layers, as I always mention. So we're going to want to put socks of some kind on as well. Uh, let's run over and check. Uh, don't see... Yep, pair of socks. Oh, nope, sock mitts. There we go. Pair of socks that fit. Even better. All right, so we'll wear our socks. Go back here to our feet. We want the socks inside the boots. All right, perfect. Boots, socks, and then the ankle holster. Okay. So, the washboard is done. You've seen how that works. And I'm going to hold the rest of the soap in reserve for po possible future use. I'm actually going to drop on the space here the bar of soap as well as the washboard. We'll just keep those together with our pile of clothes. And use them as needed. Alright, let's come back over here. And we've still got a lot more water in our tank. We don't need to clean anything else at the moment. So we're going to take advantage of our burning fire in our brazier. And we're going to go to food. And we're going to tell it to go ahead and cook up some clean water. So we're going to do a batch. And I can't remember how low our gallon jug is. I think we're almost empty. So we'll do 15 to start. Pour into a container. And I think we're standing too far away from our gallon jug for it to pour into that. I should have moved back to the other side. Let's um, let's put it in the metal tank. 
let's consume consume yes and we've got five more units that will hold two that'll hold another two and for the last one throw it in the glass jar all right I should have gotten a little closer to our uh, gallon jug. All right. So how are we doing here now? So we'll say no. It's still got 46 units, so it's got plenty of space to accumulate some more. So we're just going to leave it out there, accumulating water. So very, very important early game survival technique. Get the largest container you can get a hold of. Get a funnel and uh, set it up outside. And you don't have to often check it, but when you need some water, there it is. Okay, so we've got the washboard done. We've got our ankle holster. I wasn't able to make the full holster. We need some more leather in order to do that. So we'll be on the lookout for some leather. Let's check. I think a lot of the other things I wanted to look at were actually leather items as well. So we're in a distinct lack of leather situation. Um, the other things I was curious about, actually I think one of them we are okay with, is... or maybe not... Yeah, that one, the gambeson. So right here, the gambeson, we've got 30 thread and 26 rags. So it takes quite the amount of rags. It's basically a padded coat that is used right here. You can see a description, a thick jacket of quilted fabric designed to be worn underneath mail or other armor or worn on its own if you can't afford proper armor. So I think it's got really good stats that I want to take advantage of. So it's got 80% coverage. Pretty decent, not 100%, but uh, we'll make do. It's got a good warmth factor. Seven encumbrance, which I don't think is all that much for what you get. You get five bash and five cut protection to torso, arms, and legs. So it's got a good amount of coverage across multiple areas. We'll have to look at our other items and our layering and our warmth to see if it's going to fit well in combination with our other gear. Um, but I want to get one made and have it available so we can uh, play some... Uh, clothing Tetris and see what fits best in which places. So we're going to make that. And we do now have a Gamison. Great. And then let's see what else was on my list to look at. Uh, the Gamison. I had also looked at. Yeah, we don't. Uh, armored leather jacket. That's one of the other ones I was looking at. So this only takes. Uh, oh, it takes a leather jacket, which we have in our inventory. And then some scrap metal. So taking a look at this, it's also torso and arms with 30 warmth, 85% coverage, even more protection. Now it doesn't cover the legs like the Gambison does, and I want to probably build one of these. The other thing I was looking at as a possibility was the trench coat, and the main benefit of the trench coat is the storage space. So you don't have nearly as much here, but it's only seven encumbrance, and it's got six storage. So I'm kind of back and forth. I think maybe we'll do both again. So we've got the rags and the thread available. So let's go ahead and do a trench coat. And then we'll come back over to the armor again, to the torso. And we'll do an armored leather jacket. And there we go. So we actually used the leather jacket we were wearing. That's why our character portrait changed and made that. So we're definitely going to need to make sure we get some kind of... Uh, proper coverage on our body before we take off again. Alright, was there anything else I wanted to look at? Um, there was one other thing for the arms and these right there. We still have enough for that. So leather van braces. So only 50% coverage. So only half the time are they actually going to provide their benefit. But it's a pretty big benefit. For only eight encumbrance on your arms, you get six and six with one environmental. So I think it's a good trade-off for the amount of coverage you get. So you could think of it like uh, you get 100% at three and three. So that's better than most of these other lower level ones you'll notice. So, well, bone arm guards are their own thing, but they're also 22 encumbrance. So I'm going to go ahead and make some leather van braces. We'll use the sinew. All right, those are all of the things I wanted to take a look at. So let's look at our inventory real quick. All right, I want to drop the rock and all the cash cards. We're going to try to get consolidated at the supermarket and an ATM machine. All the rest of that's 
almost fine. We're going to drop the lamp back off on the counter. Drop the sewing kit on the counter. Drop the MP3 player. Okay. And we're going to drop into our burn pile the juice pulp. And while I'm thinking of that, I'm going to go ahead and grab everything else that's rotten in the pile over here. And drop that as well. All right, anything else in our personal inventory? We've got uh, several clothing items, all the first aid stuff we're going to keep. Okay, so what do we want to actually wear? Well, let's do this way. Let's um, pick these items up. We're going to say go ahead and wear it. Then we're also going to say to wear the gambeson and the trench coat and the van braces. So we are massively over encumbered probably, but I'm just going to put everything on and then play a little bit of Tetris and remove things to see how I can get it best to fit. So going into our coverage screen, let's take a look. So the obvious one is here. The torso is way over and our arms are way over. And the legs are a little higher than I would like them to be. So I'm going to start at the legs actually because that's probably going to be the easiest one to fit. So the gambeson and the cargo pants are where we're getting overlap and basically too much. Um, hmm. If you're curious, again, you can come to this screen and then highlight the position to see what the effects are. So by having our legs at 26, running costs are plus seven movement points per space, swimming is a lot more, and dodge skill is lowered. So basically it's all movement related stuff. So not too surprising there. So the question you want to ask yourself is, is the protection and coverage and the extra cargo space from the cargo pants worth these negative effects? I'm going to say yes for the moment. I'm going to go ahead and leave these, this the way it is for our legs. So we'll go back to our coverage screen, go to the legs. I do want the gambeson in this position so it gets hit first. So everything looks fine to me in that regard. So I think our legs are good. So our feet we can't do much with and we've already got those set. We've got our combat boots, our socks, and our ankle holster. So let's move back through the list. Our hands, we've got the light gloves and the glove liners. That's not as much protection as I would like. We're going to revisit that uh, next time we do this process, probably. All right, so now we're on to our arms. This is where we need to start paying attention. So we're at 38 and 9 on our arms. So how can we best deal with this? Now we've got different items covering multiple layers. So the long underwear is covering the torso and arms. Same thing with the long sleeve shirt, same thing with the jacket, but the gambeson covers those and the legs. And the trench coat is just the torso and arms. So how are we going to deal with this? Well, let's also consider which items are on the same layer. So we're getting a plus 12 additional negative for our torso and plus 9 for the arms because we've got multiple items that are categorized in the same layer. So trench coat is over the clothes. Gambeson is next to the skin, which I think is, yeah, that's conflicting with the long underwear top. So I think it's warm enough now that we can probably get rid of the long underwear top. So that's going to remove one of our conflicts and some of the uh, problem. So that'll leave us with a shirt that is the standard. This is worn over our clothes, and then this is worn next to our skin. All right, so the armored leather jacket and the trench coat are another conflict. So... We've also got the van braces, which is strapped. So we don't have anything else strapped. So, so the van braces are all okay by themselves. So I think we're going to remove the long underwear. And between these two, they both give really good protection values. Let's look at our torso real quick because... I don't think we, we just can't afford to have two heavy armor pieces. So it's going to end up being either the armored leather jacket or the gambeson. So that armored leather jacket is so nice, though, with the 9 9 protection. But the two of them together. Um. I think we will go with removing Man, so many choices. The trench coat gives us the six storage, which I would really like. I 
think we're going to take off the armored leather jacket where I would really like that 9 protection factor. We'll keep it handy, but I think for the moment we're going to take that off. So we're going to remove the long underwear top and the armored leather jacket. So take off long underwear top and take off armored leather jacket. And let's take a look again. So we got torso to 29 and 3. Ideally I'd like that to be under 30, but 32 is not super bad. Um, so now we've got this strapped. This is the standard layer. So we've got the two strapped items, the backpack and the Mossberg. That's what's causing the plus three. So if I stopped shoulder uh, wearing the Mossberg on the shoulder strap, that would get rid of a few points. But I don't think it's the trade-off's worth it. I'm going to keep that the way it is. Um, so we're going to go with Gambison here, then the trench coat and the rest isn't really gonna matter. All right, so we're gonna leave that the way it is. Head, we can't do much with. We'll throw the, oh yeah, we wanna throw the, uh, uh, what time is it actually? It's, uh, the sun's gonna be going down, we're not gonna worry about it. All right, let's just get some other stuff done. Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna leave things the way they are for the moment. We'll just kinda have to see how things play out, but uh, that gives us some decent coverage everywhere that we need it. We got the additional functionality of a pistol in our ankle sheath. So we've got the shotgun shoulder strapped, we've got a pistol in our ankle sheath, and we have the submachine gun in the basket. So that gives us some good variability in our weapons. But I think we're good to go there. So we'll stop messing around with that. We got our food boiled. I wanted to cook some food real quick. We got our water boiled, that is. So let's uh, advanced inventory. There to there, throw. Go ahead and get all get rid of all this stuff. Throw some boonie hats in the pile and a couple of sticks. Alright, and we'll set this on fire. And I want to go get some food. And I'm gonna cook up some acorn meal. When we were scavenging in the bushes previously, you may not know it, but acorns are awesome. I love finding acorns. So it takes a handful of acorns and some water. And that's pretty much it, and you can make a Nutrition 42 meal that has no, uh, it doesn't perish, so it lasts pretty much forever. So it's awesome. It doesn't taste very good, so it, there's no happiness factor involved, but it's wonderful. So don't pass by acorns. Make sure you grab them anytime you see them. So we're going to batch two of those. Just use the standard water. No need to use our cleaned water for that. Successful, and... Let's also make some vegetable salad. That's got a good nutrition and quenched with a little bit of enjoyability. And let's use the mustard. Okay, and what else? Let's also do some fruit leather. That'll use up some of the fruit we had before it goes bad. We don't need to rehydrate any of our vegetables or meat, so we'll do that in an emergency, so. I think I will do a couple of cooked burritos. All right, I think that will take care of our needs. And let me take a look here. So we've got all the food on us. The water that we cooked up earlier, where did it put that? Let's switch this to all and find water. So we've got the gallon jug with only one unit. Okay, let's do this. Let's unload, and we're going to pick a glass jar of clean water. We're going to pour that into the gallon jug, then unload again, and metal tank with clean water. Pour that into the gallon jug, and one more. Any other water? We've got the two plastic bottles. Those we're actually going to pick up and take with us, so that's fine. All right, so... We'll do this again, set this to our personal inventory, and find water, and I want that and that. Alright, perfect. So we've got three bottles of clean water, that will do for our running around. Let's eat some of this food real quick, so we'll do the vegetable salad and the burrito. And we're still hungry. Let's get some fruit leather. And I'd like to drink from... Our 
gallon jug of clean water and we'll make sure that we get nice and full. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's call it good. All right. So we got some food and water set up. So we're good to go there. We got our inventory taken care of regarding those clothing items. One last thing to do and we will take off. Uh, I need that, and I need thread, whatever we got, and we need to apply our sewing kit to, let's do the balaclava, um, let's see if we can actually reinforce this now. Yep, do it again. We can reinforce now. All right, I had talked about this previously, but I had never done it. Now that we've got our tailoring skill up high enough, we can have a pretty good chance of success for reinforcing. So what this does is if you look here, you make your balaclava that fits extra sturdy. So this is normally how they look, two green bars when they're full strength. What we've done is we've reinforced it and it now has two plus marks instead. And what that means is it's got extra damage uh, absorption potential so it'll take more damage than it would have previously so that's perfect so we're gonna do the same thing again and this time we're going to do it for our underwear all right succeeded on the underwear oops and we collapsed our baton that's fine and we might be able to get one more in here. Let's try the cargo pants. These are a little tougher. We may not be able to reinforce it, reinforce it successfully. We did repair it. Now, if you look at the numbers, it's 2% 2, 2 to 1.4%. So the way to think of this is it's basically a coin flip if it was 2% and 2%. So we've got an advantage. It's more likely that we are going to succeed and get it reinforced than it will be to cause a point of damage. So let's just do that. And do that again. Oh, we ran out of charges. So we ran out of thread. So I don't want to spend more time gathering the thread. We'll deal with this in the next episode or when we come back to base. So I think that gets most of our... And we can't repair our combat boots, unfortunately. So um, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. I'm not too concerned about the rain hood. So we'll do more of that when we come back. But that's a good example of how that process works, though. So you just want to be paying close attention to those percentages and uh, whether or not you can reinforce is based on the skill level between the item you're using and your uh, tailoring skill generally. So let's drop the sewing kit back on the pile here. All right. So we got that taken care of. Last thing I want to do, let's go talk to the NPC real quick. So we haven't talked to him since the very first episode, so he's just been quietly hanging out here. So there's a few things we can do with him. And I left NPCs for a later episode because they're kind of complicated. They are important, and you can turn them on or off when you're setting up your game world. I've got static NPCs turned on for this world, meaning some were populated when the game world was created, but no new random ones will be appearing. And NPCs have a few really cool functions. One, they are a quest giving mechanic. So this guy has already given me a quest, which I can see here. He wants me to find patient records. Now another possibility is you can recruit them to your team. They'll join you if you succeed and they are treated just like another character. Um, you can give them commands to follow you around to help you fight. You can set all sorts of parameters for how he's going to do so, what weapons he's allowed to use. You can trade inventory items with him. Um, a lot of possibilities. They also have their own set of skills and abilities. And while you're crafting, if they have the same skill that you do, they will actually help and your crafting will go faster. You can also learn skills from them if they're better at something that you are. So you'll occasionally be able to ask them to teach you something. So they've got a lot of really cool features and functions and we haven't delved into them too much. I was hoping to get the patient records to him and finish the quest before we asked him to join us, but we'll just try it now. So we're gonna talk to him and his, he's asking us if we had any luck with our quest. We're gonna say not yet. And now we've got a few options. We can ask him about that job he offered us or the quest, ask him what we should do, which he's not going to be saying anything too useful there. And right here, want to travel with me is what we're going to try. So we're going to pick D 
And then we've got a few options. Unfortunately, we got a pretty low percentage chance, but we're going to give it a go. If we had succeeded in a quest for him, we'd have a higher chance. His opinion of us would be higher. So I'm just going to pick the best option. We're going to pick B for Persuade. Got a 32% chance, so here we go. Holy crap, we got it. So he said, you got it, I'm with you. And I say, awesome. All right, so now we have even more choices. So here we've got that teaching option. Now currently, because of our status and uh, not enough time has gone by, we've only got a 27% chance for him to say yes to teach us something. So I'm going to ignore that for the moment. Um, we can trade items. I can tell him to guard the position. We're going to hit F so we can find out a little more about him. And this basically brings up his character sheet. So he's got really low intelligence, so he's not very smart. Uh, nines and the other stats. Uh, he's not wearing much of anything, so he has almost no protection, so we're going to have to take care of that. Um, then down here is the important part. He is a marksman. He's got rifles of eight, so if I can get some ammo and give him a rifle, he's going to be really helpful and effective at the rifle sh uh, shots. He's got decent marksmanship and some other skills. So most of these I either meet or exceed already, although he could teach me some of these that I don't have any skill in. He could at least get me to level one. So good to know. Um, so we're going to hit escape to get out of that menu. And then other options we've got, I can tell him I want you to use this item so I can give him a particular item and tell him that's the weapon or the armor I want him to use. I can have him just carry stuff. And then miscellaneous rules is another kind of important one. And I don't know how much I want to go into detail here, but it's basically setting rules for his behavior. So you can see the list. I'm not going to go over all of them. Um, I'm actually going to probably leave him here for now because I need to get him outfitted and I don't want to take 20 minutes of me shuffling through stuff uh, for you guys to watch all that. So just pause it if you'd like to look through these options. But basically they're toggle switches for various behaviors. So a lot of things you can tell him to do, not do, and how to behave. So it's pretty important to be familiar with these. And I'll go into more detail probably in the next episode or maybe a couple of episodes in the future. Um, but those are some choices. So we're going to say never mind on that screen. And I can tell him I'm going to go on my way for a while. And that'll ask him to basically leave and I'll have to have him rejoin. I'm just going to tell him to guard this position though so he stays here. So we're going to say, guard this position. He says, I'm on watch. And then when I come back, I can say, I need you to come with me. And then he'll start following me around again. So we'll say, see you around. So there are a lot of fun to have with you. And he could actually add a lot to me. But I need to get him a full set of weapons and armor and uh, gear and so on. The only thing I don't have to worry about is nutrition. So we have a mod that uh, removes any nutritional needs from him. So I don't have to worry about feeding him. But you do have to heal them if they get damaged and basically babysit them. But uh, they can be very powerful if used correctly. So that's an opportunity. Um, I think what we're going to do is take a look at our cart real quick. I'm going to grab some things out of the cart. I'm going to grab the ammo for the pistol. We're going to grab the tools, the rubber hose, and basically I'm going to grab everything. All right, we're going to come up here and it's all going into the trunk of the car. Um, trying to remember. Let me examine the car real quick. So the trunk is actually that position. So these are the trunk doors. All right. So we want to drop that location. We'll put in the ammo. Don't care about all that. We're gonna put on all of this. And we'll throw this stuff in as well for now. We'll keep the food on us, we'll keep our medicine. Don't need that immediately either, so we'll free up the space. All right, and the last thing I want, I'm not sure I still have one available here. Um, let's see, I want this to be all, and then filter, get rid of water. Um, yeah, two liter tank. Okay, this side is my personal inventory, so yeah, take the two liter tank. All right. And drop that in there. All right, so I've got a tank and the rubber hose for siphoning gas, and we've dropped in um, most of the materials, or all of the materials that we would normally carry around in our cart. 
And I'm doing this because we're going to go for a drive. We're going to see just what kind of mischief we can get into in our car. So hopefully we can make a full circuit of the town, not get blown up by a minefield or zombies or any other danger. And uh, actually, this is not going to work. It's almost nighttime. Uh, never mind. We're going to have to save the trip in the car for the next episode. I want to do that during the daylight. I do not want to be driving at night through unfamiliar terrain where I can run into a minefield without realizing it. Uh, or into a, another turret trap. So not a good idea at that time. <laughs> so let's grab our stuff back out of here again. And what couldn't we pick up? A few things. We'll grab that in a sec. So let's just drop this back in here. All right, that goes in. All right, sorry for that. Didn't realize how late in the day time had gotten. So we'll grab the cart, come up here, grab the last of that stuff. That will be the vehicle? No. Not that. Hmm. Not sure how to designate that, so we'll just grab them manually. Alright. Want to get some kind of action done this episode, not just me yakking away inside the base. Alright, there we go. But we'll do a car trip the next time. So, close the door, we've got our funnel and our tank. I want to remember to bring back some more tanks that we pull out of some vehicles for some additional storage and rainwater retention. We'll close these doors, and we are good to go. So, we're going to turn on safe mode, check our map, and we're going to head down this way and try to work our way into this side here. The sun's going to be going down here pretty soon. Let's eat... An acorn meal. And we're tired already. Well, I think we'll be okay. We should be able to get some stuff done before we need to come back and go to sleep. Spot of the dog. I don't care. We'll zoom out. And, oops, keep moving. Alright, I don't want to meet the minefield, so that's just south of us. Alright, we've got a skeleton over there. We're going to activate our baton. Have it ready to go. Zoom in. And come get me, skeleton. Let go of the cart just to make sure I free up my movement. Oops. Alright. A couple of hits managed to kill him. I don't think we took any hits, so good news. What is in the back of this? I don't remember. Have I checked previously? 2x4. Don't care about a 2x4. And what kind of vehicle is it? That's the cube van. Alright. Another skeleton. Let go of the cart. Let him step up to us. Alright, that's my kind of fight right there. We'll just smack things around. That car I know we've taken a look at. That was the makeshift crowbar. Okay. I know we've looked at these vehicles. We'll just kind of keep heading diagonally down south here. Still got a little bit of light, so let's see what kind of mischief we can get up to. Alright, we've got a few zombies on the screen now. None of the types that worry me over much. I do oops, want to switch out weapons, though. Alright, coming at me from two directions, that's fine. Alright, come on. The little kid must be dodging a lot. These little standard zombies, now that I've got layers of clothing and I've got uh, disinfectant, I'm just going to start wailing away on. I'm not going to take too much time worrying about them. We'll just get rid of them. Another cash card, backpack, boots, nothing I need to pick up immediately. Alright, sun is starting to go down, so we've just about made it over to the place I wanted to make sure we got to. So right there, diagonally down below us, is the Veterinarian's Clinic. So that's the first location I wanted to be careful that we got into. So it's actually pretty good timing. So let's come around. We've got no windows or doors back there, but we do here. Alright, this is not the Vet Clinic, so the Vet Clinic must be over there. So that building is not useful to us. Alright, now we've got a bunch of zombies on our 
display, so we got to kind of keep an eye out, especially for that spitter zombie. That's the one that I care about. The rest of these don't bother me, but that acidic zombie right there is an issue. The rest of them... Yeah, I'm not worried about the rest. It's just that acidic zombie. He's the one I care about. So, let's take some time to kill some more zombies. Let go of the cart. Alright, he managed to get some damage in on our socks. Smash those up. Nope. Off syrup, that has its uh, important uses. Don't need the rest of that. We'll keep moving our way over. Now we got a bunch of zombies on the screen now. So we haven't spent much time over here and it's pretty far away from the minefields and the turrets. So this area hasn't been cleared. So now we need to pay more attention. So we've got a boomer and way down south, some standard zombies. Those guys I know about. So groups are the danger. So, we got to try to get them to us in smaller quantities. I don't want to get swarmed under. I don't have enough guns yet or ammo yet to really take them on in large groups. So, these guys are going to move at a roughly the same speed, so they're all going to tend to arrive near each other. What do we want to do here? They've already spotted me, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to back up. The sun's going down, so I might back off, let the sun go down, and then in the evening time I'll have a better opportunity to kill them. I think we'll just wait for them right here. So that's the one that I hate, so him I'm paying special attention to. The rest of them... Not overly concerned. Let's see here. How do we want to deal with this? Ideally, I'd like to just throw things at that acidic zombie and kill him with the thrown items. I don't want to pull out a gun out this close to the populated side of town. I'm going to move north, see if we can take this guy out before he gets to us. Alright, this is where we're going to fight. So, we're going to let go of the cart. Try to kill this before that other guy gets to us. And I will give ground a bit here. Alright, so now... One step closer. Okay, we're going to throw. Then we're going to back off, throw again. Back off. Go to run mode. I'd like to maintain that range right there. How's he doing? He's moderately injured. Alright. Come on. That one hit pretty good. He's heavily injured. Can outdistance him. Let's do that. Last throw. Yes! Perfect. Alright. I gotta be careful not to step on the acid. So we're just gonna grab... Ooh, we got a toolbox! Yes! So, there are a few things early game that you're gonna do happy dances for. This would be one of them. Take a look at this section. So, this is a toolbox. So you can see all of these capabilities of the toolbox. Essentially, it's got oops, all of the standard tools wrapped into one nice package. So it's a single item. The description reads, A stout metal box containing a complete tool kit suitable for most household maintenance and construction activities. So now we have all of these features or abilities in one item. So all I have to do is carry that toolbox instead of carrying the separate tools for all of these different qualities. So that's awesome. Uh, so we're definitely grabbing, making sure we grab that. We're not going to smash that acid zombie corpse. Once the acid dissipates, we're going to pulp that. So I don't want to leave this area. I want to make sure that I get that taken care of. So let's finish killing these. I'm just going to stand my ground. Alright, these guys will smash. And a trick, instead of waiting for that pool to disappear, you can move that corpse. So on the left side, I'm going to put the all command. I'm going to get rid of the filter. That's why nothing's showing up. And over here, I'm going to say 
at my feet and I'm going to move the zombie corpse to the position under my feet. So instead of north of me where those boots are and there's acid in that space, the corpse is now right here. I can now safely butcher it and of course now the acid disappeared. <laughs> But that's how you deal with acid zombies. You want to kill them from range, then pull their corpse out of the acid pool, and then butcher it. So I absolutely hate acid zombies, spitter zombies. Those are... I, I'm this close to removing them from my games using the mod menus, but so far I've been able to hold off and just dealt with the pain. Um, I think they do add a lot to the game. All right, two first aid kits and some more disinfectant. Yeehaw, we're getting some good drops now. All right, what else has he got? Uh, everything else we've got access to, so I'm not worried about. All right, so we got all that done. Let's grab our other throwing sticks. Get that smashed, take a look. Nothing there. Okay, great, so we got that taken care of. So we've got some zombies killed, only took a small tick of damage. We've got no unhappy effects to worry about. And... We are tired, so we do want to pay attention to that. We don't want to get dead tired while we're out here in the world, but I want to get into that building if I can. Whoops, turn off run mode. We're going to stand in place for a little bit, recover our stamina before we move forward anymore. Now that night's fallen, the zombies are going to have a harder time finding us. So we're going to head straight down, and it's the building right next to this one. So right here. And... Which side is the street? He's surrounded on three sides. I don't know which side the door is going to be on. I don't want to make a bunch of noise if I can avoid it. There's the front door. All right, let's take a look first here. See what's in the trunk. Scissor jack and a wheel. Don't need that. All right, let's sneak into the veterinarian's clinic and see what we can find. A Dance 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 magazine. That's not uh, useful, I don't think. I can't remember if that levels something up or not. We'll grab it just in case. And we're going to work our way kind of around in a circle here. Meat jerky, some dog food. Hey, batter up! Baseball magazine. <laughs> we'll go ahead and grab it. There are some reasons to get items other than skill up. Some of them have really high happiness factors, so you can actually sit down and read a cool book or a magazine to raise your morale. And the table's got some soda and some reading glasses and bubble wrap. Uh, let me pose a question. Veterans don't answer this, but uh, what do you think you can do that's useful with bubble wrap? If anybody wants to put that in the comment section, let me know what you think a use for bubble wrap would be. I'm curious what you come up with. And can't go bring our thing over the counter there. What do we got? Medical gauze? Okay. Fungicide, that can be useful. Nothing there. And how to succeed in business, we'll grab that. Multivitamins, protein mix, and thread. So far, nothing too hefty on the medical side. A scalpel, probably some more animal food. This would be the kennel, so meat jerky. And I'll have to remember this is here. There are occasions where I need to take apart this kind of thing, chain link, for the wire, because there's recipes that require wire. So I'll just have to remember that I can get some in the vet clinic. Let's examine the door. Um, okay. Come here, crowbar. Is it just failing on the door over and over again? Should be automatically attempting to pry it. I'm not sure what was happening there. Usually it will automatically do that. All right, we've been in there. Well, we're not getting too much done. That door's locked. Let's... Hmm... How much noise do we want to make? Noise, we're in an area where there could be a lot of zombies nearby. Let's try activate. We haven't done our pick lock or our pick improvised lock picks yet. We're gonna activate the lock picks, pick that door, and with a satisfying click, the lock on the door opens. And this is usually where the good stuff is. Unfortunately, all we got was a dust mask, a towel, and I really don't need either. And a safe, which we can't get into yet. 
I was hoping to find some more medical items, but it is just a vet clinic, so I guess I was probably hoping for too much. And that's it. Nothing real useful in the vet clinic. Alright, there is another one. So this vet clinic is done. We're going to mark it explored. Got the antique store where I left the fire axe and some other stuff. So that will be our retreat point. We'll retreat to there if we need to. Now the other vet clinic's actually way over here. The vet clinic and then a restaurant. What else we got? Home improvement store. That can have some tools, but we're fairly well covered on the tools. There's not too many more I can think of that we would need. I don't really see too many other useful buildings. So I need this vet clinic and if we can manage to get to the grocery stores, I'll uh, use the cash card as well as loot out some food. So let's head that direction. We'll see if we can avoid zombies. This will now turn into a loot run as opposed to a kill things run. Here's an interesting car we haven't seen yet. These are solar panels. So this is a futuristic electric car has no gas because there's no gas. It's pure electric. You can see here there are two swappable storage batteries, a large electric motor, and then there's the uh, solar panels. So it's got a 38% charge in the battery, so that's good. It's got enough wheels, so we know all four of the wheels aren't destroyed. It has controls and a seat in the uh, driver's position, so those are the required components for that. So what we need to check, the motor's damaged but not out of commission. So I think this is a drivable electric vehicle. Now, I like electric vehicles because you don't have to go run around siphoning gas, but they do have a limited amount of distance they can travel on the charge that they can produce, and if uh, the weather's bad, you won't get charge up on your batteries. But you can pull these chargeable batteries and you can build workshops in your base using the vehicle build menu system and we'll get into that here in the future but uh, that's the other thing you can do with these solar panels is you can actually use them to charge up uh, batteries and to run machinery in your workshop so we're gonna definitely make a note in our map that we believe there is a working solar vehicle here so we'll note that and Let's keep moving south. Alright, oh no, Shrieker Zombie. <laughs> well, so much for being quiet. He just gave the game away, so let's try to get rid of him real quick. And now we got the Boomer Zombie spitting at us. And we've got a Standard Zombie coming from there. Let's, um... Hmm... Let's try to poke this guy to death real quick. And we got, I believe that's a tough zombie. Yep. All right, still not too worried. I'd rather the boomer we killed from range, but let's just get rid of him. All right, and we've got the tough zombie coming. We're also covered in bile now, so we're easier for them to locate. All right, that's where I want him, right on my cart. All right, tough zombie grabbed me, so we are grabbed, so we're just going to try to finish him off. There he goes. we got somebody else coming at us from the right, so things are getting a little more tense. Alright, I'm not too worried about him. Okay, got him killed. Check our status. We're okay there. Just minor ticks of damage. Let's stand in place for a second. I'm not getting any noise indications nearby. Whoops, stop smashing yes. There we go, get him on our cart. And he hit our sunglasses, man. Your pair of fit over sunglasses is gouged. You're blinded, the zombie claws at you. Your sight returns. Well, that's interesting. Huh, all right. Did he actually destroy them? Nope, still got him. So he just did a point of damage, but hitting us in the eyes like that uh, did some damage. So, all right. Okay. I think that's probably it for the locals that heard things. We'll make sure everything's good and smashed up in the area, and then we'll start checking. All right, so don't care about any of that. And we'll go ahead and grab the pipe. That's a good raw material. Don't care about that. Um, we'll take the candle. 
And ooh, another repair kit. If nothing else, that's good for a uh, hundred charges of duct tape. Always important. All right, what do we got here anyway? Okay, we must have dealt with them previously. All right, how are we doing on the map? So we are right in the intersection. If I go diagonal down, that's the vet clinic. Ugh. Well, I'm kind of torn. We've gone long enough that I need to pull the episode to a close. I don't want to run all the way back to town. We're actually in really good condition. The tired status does worry me a bit, but I think we've got some more uh, adventuring in us before we should head back. So let's try to get into the vet clinic here and uh, naturally let's uh, wield um, the baton. And I'm just going to drop that on the ground so I don't lose the points. Oh, well, there we go. And then we'll pick it up again and switch back to it here. Alright. Come on. And another zombie coming behind us. So there we go. That way he'll step onto the cart space. Why is he breaking the window? I think that was another zombie I was hearing nearby. Single barrel shotgun. I'm not too interested in a single barrel shotgun. We're just going to leave that there. Alright. Can we make it inside now? This is not the vet clinic. And we're into the first or the grocery store. So the vet clinic's next door. Uh, Alright, let's do a quick run through. This episode will run slightly longer than I usually do, but... I don't think you'll mind too much. Oh, that is another thing I actually wanted to ask. If I could get some feedback in the comments on the length of the episodes I've been posting, I'm kind of curious how people feel about these running 45 minutes to an hour. I'm okay with whatever length of time you guys are most comfortable with. So if you would prefer 30 minute videos, one hour videos, you don't care. If you could let me know in the comment section, I'd appreciate it. I need some feedback so I can tailor the content to folks and uh, it would really help me out to know what your guys' opinion on that is. Alright, looks like we got most of this place emptied out. So nothing in here to deal with. We'll grab what's left. And it must have been the other grocery store that had the ATM. This one didn't have it. So let's keep heading down. And car's got a few items. Let's move over. We'll check here. A crowbar. I don't need another one of those. And cigarettes don't need that either. Okay. And let's check out another veterinary clinic. Don't need a newspaper ad. What do we got here? More jerky. Ooh, a sewing book. Hopefully that will take us above level four we're at. I, now, this is a beginner's book, so probably won't help much. And we've already got batters up. Okay, this looks like the same exact setup as the last one. Pocket guide to first aid. That might be useful. I think we've already got the skill for that. Fit over sunglasses. We need that. I actually need several fit over sunglasses. If we can get three of the same type of sunglasses, we can actually create welding goggles. So, rubber gloves, ooh, bandages. Good to find in a doctor's office, even if it's an animal doctor. And what do we got? Medical gauze. Hey, a bar of soap. Hot diggity. I feel a little funny getting all excited about finding a bar of soap, but I think anybody that's been following along with the episodes knows why I'm enthused. And for some reason the crowbar is still not being automatically used. I'm not sure what's up with that. Sure, we'll take that. Uh, we'll take to dog food. Nothing else in here. Door's locked. Let's try our lock pick again. And we got it again. Cool. Sewing kit. All right, and another safe we can't get into right now. All right, so we've cleared out the other one. So we got a little bit of medical gear, so the soap makes me happier than just about anything. Now, unfortunately, it's nighttime. Were it daytime right now, we would be able to see a larger section of the map over this direction. And that's one of the reasons I'm trying to clear the zombies out of this end of town, is so we can get a look over here. But it's going to have to wait for our next daylight cycle. 
Actually, I'm kind of curious. How are you doing for gas? So three and six. All right, let's come back this way. This is the first grocery store we've already been in. Those are all the zombies we just killed. This would be the other grocery store. I believe this is the one that's going to have the ATM. So I can consolidate the 400. I haven't cleaned this one out. So let's set this to all and this to the cart. There we go. That to all. So battery and some gum. Oops. All right. Try this again. There we go. Ooh, medical items. Don't need a buddy novel. Peanut butter. Heck yeah. I'd love me some peanut butter. Two first aid kits and a gallon jug of ammonia. All right. We're scoring some good stuff that makes me pretty happy. Eggs. Love the eggs. Orange soda. Sausage. I'm moving through these pretty quickly. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> Don't care. Look like some Pilsner that we know about already. What do we got here? Mm, bowl of Insta salad. Pretty good stockpile in this grocery store. And we got a pear and some chocolate covered pretzels. Oh, so love having a shopping cart. Just run around, grab it all. I'm not even looking what this stuff is, by the way. I don't care. I'll sort it out when I get back to the base. It's all food-related items, so... Alright. I think that covers most of it. Now, these are the ATMs. If you hadn't seen a previous episode where I encountered these, if we examine it, you've got some options. And I'll cancel out and go to my inventory. All of these cash cards I've been accumulating are ATM-type cards, and they've got varying amounts of money on them. And you can use an ATM to consolidate all of these onto one single card so you don't have this big long list of cards. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to examine it. I'm going to say transfer all money. And I want them to put all the money on this card, the one that has the most. Now when I look at my inventory, the list got a lot shorter because now instead of 20 cash cards all spread out onto different item lines, there's 20 cash cards with a zero balance and a single cash card with 186,000 balance. So much easier to deal with. Cash cards are important. There are a couple of ways you can use them. The one way I most commonly end up burning through my cash cards is you will find gas stations with working fuel pumps that you can put uh, cash cards into to activate the pump so you can fill up your gas tank. All right, looks like we got all of this previously. This leads us out back. All right, let's take a look at the buildings here. So this puts us out in the field, I think. Now, we've got a pretty good amount of stuff done. I'm going to run up here to the antique station, or antique building, right after I punch this zombie in his fat head. Smash him up. And we're almost ready to call this episode to a close. I think while I'm doing this, I might as well just let it run long and get this done. So, this is... Antique store, doors on the other side. Okay, so the antique store's got the door up front. What is that? A flyer. Don't care about a flyer. All right, pretty sure this area is pretty well cleared. So what did we leave here? Jade brooch, if we want to feel pretty, pretty, pretty. Don't care about any of that. Let's use advanced inventory. What do we got here? Um, we've got a couple of things of soap now, so I want to pay a little more attention to all this filthy stuff. Some of it can be more important now that we have a method of cleaning it. I'm not concerned about any of that stuff, so we're fine there. Don't want the flint lock. Don't want the baseball. There's the fire axe. That's the main thing I was coming here to make sure we grabbed. There's the sledgehammer. I knew we'd found a sledgehammer. All right couple uses for the sledgehammer. You can actually go through certain types of wall material with it, so it's a way of breaking into certain buildings. You just got to have a lot of stamina and strength and just keep swinging away and you'll bash your way through a wall. You can also use it on big boulders out in fields to break them down into rocks if you have a need for a large number of rocks. Um, so we're just going to oops, use the advanced menu, try to grab it all if we've got space. Yep, we had space. Cool. All right, anything else in here we want to look at? Don't want a briefcase. Um, I don't think I'll need another brazier. Let's 
take it just in case if we've got the space. And we did. All right, so cool. Let's bring up our map and we are going to delete our note. So yes, to delete it, that's gone. That's our solar vehicle note. Don't have any other notes. That's been explored, that's been explored, that's been explored. So those are all clear. That's been explored. All right, we haven't hit the home improvement store, so we're pretty much right on the border. The only thing's left on this side. And I'm not too concerned about the bar. So I'm going to make a quick trip back home. I like to end the episodes in the base if I can. So we're just going to head straight out this way. To be fairly clear, we've pretty well cleared this area. And with static zombies for the world generation, there shouldn't generally... <laughs> of course, now we see some noises. Which building is this? Hmm. All right, what's in there? Ah, of course, that's why I couldn't see it. Shady zombie. Well, we'll take the string, smash the corpse, and let's go ahead and take the sheets if we can fit them, the string, and the sticks. All right, cool. That worked out pretty well. Oops, I gotta be careful. There is a minefield around here. We don't need the flashlight with no charges. Minefield's north of us. I'm gonna head directly this way for a bit, just to be super careful. I've accidentally quick moved onto mines before, and it scares the holy bejesus out of me when it happens and the explosion goes off. We had a note for some clothes or something here, but I'm not sure where they're at in the dark. Um, well, actually, let's do this. I keep forgetting. I've got a flashlight. <laughs> All right, so that's probably it. Yep, that's it right there. So we're going to turn the flashlight back off again. All right, what was there? Boots, a duster, jeans that fit. Um, sure, we've got, if we've got space, nope, destination area is full. And I'm also full. So never mind, we're all full up. Back to base. Turn on safe mode. And there we are. Close the door behind us, and we are back in our spot. All right, I'm going to call the episode to a close right there. I think we had a great episode, got a lot done, uh, both in inventory management as well as doing some clearing of the town. We picked up a lot of really good items I'm really happy to see. So I've got some interesting things coming up in the next couple of episodes. I'm going to probably have my guy go to sleep, and when he wakes up, we're going to jump in that car, and we are going to go for a drive. We might take the NPC with us, but when the sun comes up, I want to have an exciting episode on the next one. So I look forward to that and hope you join me. As usual, please... Uh, like, subscribe, and comment if possible, um, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.